the brothers and sisters on behalf of uh, LSA K3. Uh, we welcome you to annual Grand Star. We appreciate you that, that you answered uh, this invitation. And uh, hope that you will have a great time this time in this holy month today. Uh, this program will be as in a uh, uh, slide here. We will have Tlawa and then we will have a lecture by our guest, Tulur. The star will be held at uh, 7.54 p.m. and then Mother Prayer will be uh, in room 2204 uh, men and uh, 56314 uh, women. And then uh, dinner will be at uh, 8 in this room for all of us. And uh, now we will have uh, a recitation of uh, some verses of the Holy Quran, Prophet Rabbi Sallallahu Alaihi Uh, deeds for those Allah will change their signs 
sins into good deeds, and Allah is ever of forgiving, most merciful. And whoever uh, repents and does right, righteous good deeds, they verily he repent towards Allah with true uh, repentance. So that Allah will happen. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Musel. And now it's of great honor uh, that we have Dr. Noor with us to give uh, a lecture about Israf and uh, Bokhm and the balance between them. Uh, Dr. Noor is a professor of structural engineering at uh, K, uh, SKK University and he worked as a lead structural engineer in several companies, including. Uh, Samsung and many other companies. He has granted permission for Ijaza in Arabic uh, from highly profiled scholar uh, from Egypt and Azhar University, uh, including uh, Quran teaching and Tafsir and uh, Hadith. Uh, Professor Noor has uh, several activities, Islamic activities actually, uh, such as uh, he uh, introduced a lecture uh, in uh, Quran and Hadith uh, in a uh, weekly class in uh, Central Masjid in Seoul and also in SKK University and he recently launched a YouTube channel for Dawa so please uh, welcome uh, Professor Noor to the lecture. Thank
and at the same time, it is something I think it's very relevant to, uh, to our life in general. So uh, this lecture, inshallah, I'm going to um, uh, put some shade from a uh, uh, kind of uh, perspective, from the Quranic perspective, and I'm going also to give kind of um, background for the relation between extravagance in general and the month of Ramadan, how we can receive it from within the month of Ramadan. Before starting an extravagance, because uh, as you know, these special nights and these special days that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, extended our lives, our, our lifespans, uh, to be uh, under this blessed month and under these uh, blessed nights uh, during the whole year. Uh, it's difficult not to mention about it before going into the main topic or the main theme of this lecture. So, uh, as you know, we are in the month of Ramadan and in the uh, last 10 nights of Ramadan. And actually, uh, this is something that we need to remind ourselves with. That is, these are the best nights in the entire year. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given a great opportunity for the Muslims in general uh, during these uh, last 10 nights, which is the night of power of Laylat al And we need to uh, work hard and to uh, invoke a lot of supplications as much as we can. And this should be hand in hand with our extra and voluntarily type of worshipping acts, whether it is related to the prayers, or the dhikr, or the recitation of the Quran. So we need to strive in general during these uh, nights. And uh, I found that uh, whenever the person is trying to feel the meaning of these nights and this month, you are going to put a kind of charge inside you so that you will find uh, the energy to do more and more during the day of the, uh, the month, this, uh, this month or during the night. So you need to, you know, to charge yourself first and then after that, after putting this out of energy, you are going to find that you are going to spend the time uh, with the Quran and with the Dik and with the Ridada and so on. So, uh, please try, these kind of gatherings are very important in this lesson. That you are going to find one hadith, for example, during this lecture, but that is going to resonate with you. Or maybe you are going to listen to a recitation, the nice, beautiful recitation from our brother, Nathaniel. Uh, it is very nice recitation. One act may make this resonance with you. Or maybe one of your colleagues, or one of your friends, or one of your brothers is going to give you a hadith or kind of big or he reminds you of something or saying that I am doing this or I'm doing that. And such kind of gathering is very important in this. That it would you know, give you a boost, that would give you a push in the right direction. So we also lost Pat and Tad to be among those are going to be accepted during this blessed month and to be among those who are going to be free, their necks to be free from the empire as the Sulaih Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam promised. Now let's go to the um, this lecture which is the extravagance or the fear general. Actually when I was trying to think about this and relate the Al-Islaq or the extravagance in general, extravagance means that exceeding the limits to be excessive in whatever aspect. The point is always to think about it from the point of view of food and drink disposals. So we say that we should always not to exceed the limits, and we know the values. But actually, um, today I'm going to address this topic from three different levels, or from three different aspects. The first one I'm going to talk, I'm going to talk about the causes of extravagance in general. And the second part, I'm going to talk about the types, the different types, sorts, kinds of extravagance. And after that, I'm going to talk about what are the things that we can do so that we can avoid such kind of habit. Uh, so these are the main outline of, of the lecture. And I think that I've been given also 30 minutes. So I hope that I can finish, inshallah, within the time frame that I've been given. So first of all, uh, related to the causes of uh, extravagance in, in general, I found that whenever we're talking about extravagance, 
we need to find uh, or we need to think in wider perspective that it's not only related, even whatever I'm, I'm reading about any articles about extravagance or or the Slav or the Vienna so on, always they are related to, um, to what to food and drink, most commonly we are talking about this. But I found that we can address it in different levels because actually food and drink or food and drink disposals in general, this is something, yes of course, because we can't say it's a tangible part, it's a physical part. But actually we have other types of extravagance which is related to intangible parts, okay? related to the desires, related to other things, other ni'am, other blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us, but we are not appreciating it. So first let's go through the causes for if we have any type of blessing, food, drink, or any type of blessing, and what are the causes for us or the main reasons behind that making such kind of attitude toward the blessing of Allah. I found that there are two parts here, or there are main two causes. One cause is coming from yourself. And this cause actually is going to be related to how you perceive the blessing and how you are perceiving the provider of the blessing. So there are two links here. The blessing itself and the provider, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whenever that you are looking to the blessing, one of the main reasons for you not to be appreciated, or at least if we want to say, we want to put it like this, that we need to have a sense of appreciation toward the blessing, and we need to have a sense of gratefulness toward the provider of the blessing. If these two factors, these two things are not there, then extravagance will be very easy for you to pursue. It's very easy, because you are not making you are ingrateful, for example, toward Allah, or you are not appreciating the blessing itself. And actually, this is something that we need to take care of. When we are talking about the blessing and the appreciation of the blessing, Rasulullah Sallallahu mentioned in the hadith, in the that is, يُصْبِحُ عَلَى كُلِّ سُلَامًا مِنْ أَحَدِكُمْ صَلَةً كُلُّ يَوْمٍ تَطْلُرُ فِي الشَّرْسِ That on each joint, or a piece of bone inside your body. The ulama said that it's almost like 360 joints and bone inside our bodies. And every day, there is a charity that is due upon this kind of bone joint in your body. فَبِكُلِّ تَزْبِحَةٍ صَلَةٍ وَبِكُلِّ تَحْمِيلَةٍ صَلَةٍ وَبِكُلِّ تَحْمِيلَةٍ صَلَةٍ وَبِكُلِّ تَحْمِيلَةٍ صَلَةٍ وَأَمْرُ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ صَلَةٍ وَنَهْيٌ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ صَلَةٍ وَيَجْزُو عَنْ ذَلِكَ رَكْعَتَانِ رَكْعَهُمَا مِنَ الْخُمْرِ In this hadith, Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم is telling us two main, two main important issues. The first one is that every day you woke up early in the morning, there is a charity upon you that you should get it. Because of what? Because a hidden blessing there in your body, which is that you are healthy that the joints that we have, which is actually these bones are the main, the main one we can, this skeleton that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided for us, it is the main source for any kind of activity that we could imagine in our daily life, right? If you just have a broken bone in your toe, for example, you will not sleep the night, right? And early in the morning you're going to have a headache, and you're going to speak about it all the day long. Why? Because really it's something that is very irritating. You cannot do your work, for example, efficiently without considering this, or without having that this body to be in a very good condition. Every day in the morning we are having, we are having such a kind of blessing. 360 different types of blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is providing for us. And we are not appreciating this. Because we, in the morning we come, you know, woke up early in the morning, the first thing that come up in our minds, if we are not in Ramadan, they thought we want to have our drink, or we want to drink our cup of coffee, or tea, or whatever. Or about your work, you want to go to your company, or your, uh, your lab, or your university, or whatever that the type of work, right? We are busy with our own activities, with our own interests, but we neglect something that is very important which is what appreciation of the blessing, which is given to you. And subhanAllah, whenever that we lose such kind of appreciation of the blessing, 
we are going to feel that there is nothing. It is, it is okay, it's for granted for me to have my body always to be at a very good condition. I'm not thinking about this too much. And this is actually totally wrong. You should always think about this. This is why following the footsteps of Rasulullah especially in the aspect of the day, is very important. Very important. Why? Because it reminds you always with that remember that there is a blessing. It's a hidden blessing there. But you do not know about it. And you need to have it to give shukr regarding this. This is why Rasulullah in this hadith, he addressed the second issue, which is what? How we can give the charity of these kind of blessings that is already embedded there or inherited in our bodies. He said that means that you can say such a kind of stuff by your tongue. Or instead of this, you can enjoy the good. Say this is right, brother, you can't do it. This is right, sister, you should do this. Or forbid the evil. Or forbid the evil, which is that uh, this is considered to be a salam. Every day, on a daily basis. If you want to, to get rid of this kind of charity and this kind of tasbih and tahleel, tahleel and so on, if you are not able to do so, that is it's okay. You can do another type of appreciation of the blessing, which is by your body also. You can do or give two rakah of salat of two, four, six, or eight, according to the prophetic tradition. So now look at this, look how the Islam is really breaking such kind of awesome that is giving you, reminding you that there is a blessing and you can make the shuk through a type of act of your tongue or through your body. Another type, this is the first link, which is appreciation of the blessing. The second link, as I said, the appreciation, not the appreciation, the gratefulness, or being grateful toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is an important issue for us as slaves in general. We should show gratefulness toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to being grateful toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whenever that you see someone that is walking outside, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala afflicted him with kind of he has his hand cut up, or maybe he is paralyzed, or he is suffering from something in his face, or he's blind, or he cannot hear well, or he is afflicted with a kind of trial or something. What is the dua that you are saying whenever you see someone that is afflicted with a trial or for a trial and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say what? Alhamdulillah. Yes, Alhamdulillah. What is the next one? Yes, Right? What is the point here in this dua? We are saying that whenever we see someone that is afflicted with any kind of thing, we say that Alhamdulillah, we praise Allah. Praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That He hasn't put me in this trial that He has put you through. And he has favored me over a lot for a name of his creations, completely. Means what? Means that, that even that you are walking, walking on your feet and seeing someone else afflicted, this is a hidden blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has protected you from a trial. Any different or any kind of a trial that you can't think of. And this is something important, that you should show this gratefulness toward Allah. You should be grateful toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Toward that He protected you, He sheltered you, He sustains you, He provides your sustenance. Many, I can't count that. I'm not going to be able to count. It's countless blessings and bounties and graces from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to think about this. the link between the, the blessing. The appreciation, sense of appreciation, and the sense of gratefulness toward the provider, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another quote, the second post is, I call it the malal al ni'am. Malal al ni'am means that getting bored with the blessing. We are going into a higher level now. Getting bored of the blessing. How do we come that we get bored with the blessing? Actually, we do it many times. Many times. Some people, they think that, for example, for those who are having kids, they think that every day that he sees his kids, and you know, the burden of dealing with the kids and so on, he feels that maybe they are a burden upon him. 
for some people they are thinking about it. For some people they think about that their work is not a good work. And I need to change it. Or maybe you think that the environment that you are living in is not suitable for you. Or the people that you are interacting with, they are not good enough. Then you are going to have what? This is something that is hidden in ourselves as human beings. That you are going to, 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 to what? To get bored with the blessing itself. And this is what Ibn Qayyim mentioned when he said that Laysa al abdi adarru min malaki na'am illa ya'ala. There is nothing worse in the slave of Allah than getting bored with the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He thinks the blessing is a kind of a curse upon him. Okay? So this is something that is very important. And this is actually something I consider it one of the deepest illness in the modern life that we are living right now. That it cultivates inside us, inside us, in breakthroughs to work anything. And this is by default you are going to get bored. You are going to find that people are, are getting bored and they are ingrateful toward anything. They are complaining. I mean that the main, you know, the main or the flavor of the day for many people, they are always complaining. Complaining about anything. The weather, the work, the lab, the university, his father, his mother, or the spouses, or his colleagues, or the nation, or the government, or the education. You name it. You are going to find that the people are always complaining. And actually, whenever you look about this regarding complaining, it is not one of the traits of the Muslim. You should not be complaining over it. Yes, you can address the right and the wrong, but you should not complain, because this is not the attitude of the Muslim. You should not complain, because complaining would always, by default, would give you, or always would push you to get bored of the listening. Again, there is a lot of listening, but we need to be careful. That is, maybe, yes, we cannot, or we feel some kind of, we are being bothered a little bit with this kind of listening, in some way or another. But again, it is, it is the core, the essence in itself, it is something appreciated, uh, appreciated. We need to think about it. So, stay away from being bored of the na'am, or malal na'am. The last, or maybe the two last factors regarding this, which is the culture of of uh, extravagance in general is, I call it, the consumption pattern that we are having in our communities in general, especially the Muslim communities. Okay. Which is related, as uh, maybe I have mentioned it before here also, which is related to the philosophy of that having more is something good. Having more is something good. This is in every aspect that you could imagine. So even that whenever that you are drinking, or whenever you are at the restaurant, that is, you are allowed to refill, for example, the, the juice or the, the soap to drink or whatever. And uh, one plus one and the pizza or something like this. Which is what? It is giving you a kind of consumption better. That is something subconsciously, maybe you cannot feel it, but day after day, year after year, you're going to find yourself, you're going to the places where that is going to provide you more, right? And actually more, even that you are not in a need for this more, but just you're going there because it's nice to have something. Instead of have, having one pizza, you're going to have two. Instead of having one pant, you're going to have two. Instead of having a t-shirt or something, you're going to have two, right? You're not thinking that you're in need or not. It's not the problem right now. The problem is you want to have more. That's the point. That's the, the point. And subhanAllah, whenever we think about this from the perspective of the Sahaba and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is totally the opposite. Totally the opposite. They were looking to the graces and the bounties of Allah, especially in the food, drink, and clothes, and so on. It is something that is, if they are having more from this dunya, if they are having more from this dunya, this means that it is going to be cut off from them in the year after. They are always using the, this kind of phrase. That we are people. That is, that means that their rewards has been hastened or accelerated for them to enjoy it in dunya. And in the akhirah, they are not going to find anything. 
So this is why they were very cautious regarding this issue that they want to be in the Zahid or to be always kind of a Zahid person that is taking the suffice amount of whatever that you could imagine and that's it and the other part or the extra part it is for others even that in their right even in their right Rasulullah was talking about this in the in the Ta'am and the Qudus Ta'am al-Wahid Yekfir Ilan Ta'am al-Ithnan Yekfir Arba'ah Ta'am al-Arba'ah Yekfir Tamaneen that the fool one person one individual is enough for two this means what? what is the meaning of this? of course there is Barak of course it is part but it means what? That you can, instead of having your abdomen to be full with one meal, for example, you can share it. Okay? You can share it with others. And this would be suffice for you. Okay? So this is the teaching of Rasulullah. Totally different than the better, the consumption better that we are living nowadays. Rasulullah mentioned about this also in the hadith. But if it's not covered in a hurry about for this woman, but instead Rasulullah said that, but I am fearing from the dunya to be extended in front of you so that you are going to compete in it. You are going to compete in dunya to the extent that it's going to destroy you as it has destroyed the people. Look how the perspective of Rasulullah to work any turkey game and look to our modern type of understanding regarding whatever be uh, uh, food or drink or food or specifics in general. And the last post, inshallah, to end this part, which is related to looking to the higher level classes. This is one of the major things that we are always looking to the classic or the highest or the higher class above us. So the way that they are, the way that they are putting their clothes or the size of their clothes, we should follow them. Because it's not because you know this is the life now. That you want to show, you want to be distinguished, you want to be, you want, you want to be, uh, you know, uh, famous or something like this. So you are going to look to the people above you. And this is the problem. That you are going to purchase something that is maybe not suitable for you. That is maybe not, not, not only suitable for you. Maybe that you are not in need for such kind of commodity. But just you are bringing it because you want to, to be among the higher class, for example. This is in every awesome. This is in every awesome. Whether it is related to the food, to the drink, the way that you are dressing, the way that you are walking, the way that you are talking, the neighborhood that you are staying in, the apartment that you are living in, looking to the people who are higher than you and you want to go to work with. So this is something that we, we want always to take care of. And Rasulullah mentioned about this kind of hidden disease. And he said that, Look to the people who are in the down class. Because based on this, you are not going to be displaced with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided. This is a very important concept. SubhanAllah, this is the concise speech of Rasulullah. He knows well what inside our hearts. So these are the causes. I do not want to spend more time on this. The next type is. Uh, the next point is the type of extravagance. We have different types. You can put them, categorize them into two main categories, tangible and intangible. The tangible one is related to food, drink, and desires at the same time. Whatever the desire is. So you can have extravagance in different types of food. Whether it is something that is enjoying in general. Food is one of the one of the pleasures, one of the ni'am of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Other desires, that is having the, the, the sense of having something, or to collect something, or to have something in your hand. Even that, now this is a kind of, you know, what I can say, disease. Even in the mobile phones, for example, found that the people, they want to go to higher version, to upgrade. Okay? Why? What is the reason? Do we need higher, higher grades regarding the 
or upgrade your power mobile app, most cases you don't. Know. This is a common fight between me and my daughter, actually. That, that is whenever you think about this, what is the main purpose? What is the main purpose for having the up-to-date mobile app? There is no except that, except that Apple, they are putting their brands, and Samsung, they are putting their brands, and they are, uh, they are attracting the people by the fancy designs and so on. But what is the, what is the, the, the final or the ultimate goal of a mobile phone that is just communicating with people? You can't do it by Nokia 6110, I think. It can be done. This is something that we want to put in our minds. I'm not saying that the advancement is not good, but I'm saying that there is something wrong. It's happening. We need to take care of it. The other part which is related to the types of uh, extravagance is the intangible part. And this is from a point of view is not much more important, which is not related to the food and drink and these other things, but it's related to something else, which is what is something related to your, for example, sah, which is the health, or the leisure time, which is the time. Some people, they are misrefeed, they are having, they are exceeding the limits, they are excessive in terms of consuming their time or consuming their health. And subhanAllah, has warned us from these two main things. There are two blessings. There is many of the people, they are deceived in sahab, which is the health, and haram, which is the later time. With how much time that you are spending in trivial things, you can count hours per day that you are spending in trivial things. Especially for those who are addicted to the internet, and surfing the internet, and so on and so forth, and social media, they are going, you are going to find, you can judge yourself, spending hours in this. Nobody cares. Nobody, nobody even warning you. You are doing it because why? This is a kind of extravagance here. You are exceeding the limits. You should be careful because the time the capital of the human being, not so mad in itself. If you are not caring about it, then you are going to find that the days and the months and the years are going to be taken from under your feet and you are going to find your, yourself in a time where that to say that I wish I could exploit my time in a better way. So we need to think about it. Later time, sah, the hill. Other issues related to this, like the fifth thing, your thinking, the way you think. Look what you are thinking of. If you are spending too much time in thinking about things that is not, not important for yourself, for your own, for the Islam, or for the betterment of this human being, then you are making an or exceeding the limits regarding your thinking, the way you think. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this energy and we need to take care of it. Other issues which is the last one regarding the types of extravagance which is related to the Islam al that you are exceeding the limits on yourself and exceeding the limits on others. How we can interpret it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Kuli Ibadi Alina they or my slaves who transgress against themselves. Israel here comes with the meaning of transgression. Exceeding the limits, but in terms of what? Sinful action. This is one part that we do not care of, which is making a lot of sinful actions and going through going through these different levels of the sinful actions. And at the end, you're going to find that really you are exceeding the limits. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving us the hope based on His mercy. Those who have or those who have uh, transgressed against themselves by making these sins. Do not be disturbed from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to raise and forgive all the sins. And transgression against others by doing Kind of pressure toward him. In the Quran, Ali ibn al he was, he was, oh, Ali means that arrogant. Yeah. Throughout the Quran was described like this. He was arrogant. 
from the transgressors, means that from the oppressors, that he is exceeding the limits in the dealing with the others while oppressing them. So take care of this. Do not exceed the limits with the people around you. Do not oppress them. Try to find a suitable way to deal with them. And do not be a transgressor in this hospital, which is your relation with others. Now let's go to the lost part, which is not going to take more than five minutes. I hope. And how to avoid, how to avoid the trans, uh, this kind of uh, trans, uh, swell or extravagance? The first one, as we said, you need to be grateful toward Allah. And the gratefulness means three things. Shukrun bil lisan, wa shukrun wa shukrun bil arkan, wa shukrun bil qalb. Means that you need to have to be grateful toward Allah by three different levels. The first one, by tongue. Say Alhamdulillah wa shukrillah. This is most of the people they are doing. The second one, bil arkan. Means not by your limbs, hands and, and legs and your eyes and so on. How? How you are going to do so? I think they are having a whole discussion here. You are doing something. But he was so actually So I need to be careful. So uh uh, being grateful toward Allah is said by your tongue, by your lips, by not doing anything wrong by your lips. And the third one is going to be by your heart. By your heart. It means that to really feel the gratefulness toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is number one. Number two, the appreciation of the blessing. As I said at the first time, the appreciation of the blessing. This is how we can do this. Easy. This is very easy. If you just, if you just try to follow it. By making a cup, we call it a cup in Okay, that whenever that before going to bed, for example, say the dhikr, and it's very meaningful. Like one of the dhikr for uh, before going to sleep, Alhamdulillah, eleven of Amr and Sakhan, that Noah, the coming that the Kafi alam wa alam, that we thank Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, Alhamdulillah, who provided for us the food, who provided for us the drink, who is providing for us the spice and amount of food. And who is providing for us the shelter? And then, how many people they are not having the spice, food, and they do not have the shelter? Making such kind of you note know, of thick before sleep, it would give you a message. It would remind you. The next point is the purpose of the blessing itself. Some people, some people think that the blessing itself. The blessing itself is related to you. And whenever that you have the, have the blessing, that you should fulfill it or you should gratify it. I call it the gratification of your desire from the blessing. But actually this mindset is not right. This mindset should be cheated. In one incident happened with Rasulullah he was talking, he was in a journey with the Sahaba. One, one, one of the uh, people came and he was joining the Sahaba in their travel, the caravan, for example. And he was looking to the left and the right. And it seems that the person seems, or currently he seems that he doesn't have enough food, enough money, and he is having a dress that seems to be from uh, a lower class. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave like, you know, kind of pronouncement for the Sahaba. They said, or he said to them, If the person is having additional extra type of, you know, animal, for example, means that you can, instead of mounting the animal by yourself, you can have another one in your bed. And if the person has extra food, then he should give to those or to that person who does not have. And he was giving 
different types of nomad digital drifting and so on, until that we imagine that there is no right for anyone for any extra type of drifting or food or something. Can you imagine to this level? It's not your right. It's not your right. It is the right of other people who are poor or needy. And there are three things which is going to help us to avoid this extravagance. The next is the ownership of the blessing. Many times we think that we are the owner of the blessing, right? But actually no. This is not right. The owner is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Khan. And spin out from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made you successful. This means what as if Allah is giving you the money and you are like, you know, like Waqi, for example. You are not the owner, you are the agent. You just have it, this money, the property of Allah, and you are going to be or you are going to be responsible. So do not think about the blessing, it, it is belonging to you. No, it belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another narration, Allah Allah Khalaqat. ثُمَّ رَضَقَتْهُ ثُمَّ يُمِيتُهُ ثُمَّ يُمِيتُهُ سورة الروح Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created you He has provided you with the systems and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to lift you up so everything in the hands of Allah do not think that it is in your hands the next is the accountability which is in the day of judgment whatever blessing that you've got now in this dunya you are going to be held accountable about it in the day of judgment the resurrection day and you are not, you are not go, you are going to be asked on the day of judgment about the pleasures. And the ulama, they have a lot of opinions regarding the pleasures. They said that even the shade on a hot summer day is considered to be a pleasure. Can you imagine? They said that the cold water in the hot summer day it is a pleasure. Being safe and sound at your home it's a pleasure. You're going to be held accountable in the day of judgment in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and every aspect of the blessing that you've got. So be careful about this. And the last one is related to this blessed one. That we have, as you know, the zakat of Zuf. And most of the people they are giving their zakat of that even during this month, the month of Ramadan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about this kind of sharing the property with others. The amwali haqqun nisa'i wa ma'roof that in their properties there is a right for those who are in need and those who are deprived from the system. Means what? That whatever you've got now, it is actually supposedly to be shared with others. Haq, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the word haq right. It's a right. It's not only something that is out of love, for example, out of compassion or out of that you feel sorry for this. No, it's not like this. It's right. And the haq here, not even the zakat. In this, it is in Surah al dariyat I guess. And here, it does not mean the zakat. Because this ayah, it is Mekian ayah. And the zakat has been obligated of the Madani period. So the ulama, they said that the haq here is the salaf. It is the salaf, not the zakat. So we need to take care about this. This is the outline at the end of this uh, picture. We have addressed here the clothes of the extravagance types of extravagance and how to avoid them. We hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so, uh, I hope this uh, lecture was uh, informative for you. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us always to be grateful toward whatever blessing that He is providing for us and to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be always appreciating whatever type of blessing that He bestowed upon us. Thank you very much, good to know. Um, anybody have any question? If you have any question, Dr. Rossetti. We still, we still have uh, five minutes. Okay, no question. So, uh, after five minutes, we will have uh, Iftar here in this room. And uh, we will go for moderate prayers. It will be uh, in 2204 uh, brothers and 
in uh, fifth floor in prayer room 563-1 uh, for uh, sisters. And then we will uh, come back here to uh, dinner at 8.10, inshallah. Thank you very much.